This is lesson 3.2, reflecting graphs of functions. In this lesson, the focus will be on looking at related changes in the equation of a function to reflections of its graph in both the x and y axes. This lesson flows fairly nicely from what we were just doing. Uh, we were moving the graphs uh, of our functions uh, left and right, up and down, and looking at the equations to that. Uh, this one, uh, as I said, we're just doing um, some reflecting. So if we take a look at the function, y is equal to the square root of x minus 1. Uh, this function shouldn't be too foreign to us. If you recall, this is going to move the function 1 in the positive direction. So that is going to be where our function begins. And then from there, uh, if you recall, we go over 1, up 1, over 4, up 2, and over 3, sorry, over 9, up three, like so. So that would be the original function that we have right here. And so I'm just going to uh, denote that with green. So how would we take that function if we truly wanted to, and how would we reflect it, for instance, in the x-axis? So if we want this function to go down here and look something like that, what would happen to the equation? Well, I'll do this one in blue right here. And so the equation would look like this. You would have y is equal to, and you just have to put a negative out in front. Okay, and I'll show you kind of how this works with our input values. So let's say we put an input value in of 1 right here. So 1 minus 1 gives you 0. The square root of 0 is 0, and 0 times a negative is still just 0. So that point is at the same spot. But this is where things start to change now. If we put in 2, you have 2 minus 1 is 1. The square root of 1 is 1, but then 1 times the negative gives me negative 1. And so you'll see that all of these points right here get reflected. Okay. And so the note I'll get you to make right here is really we're just focusing on this negative value right here. But when we add that negative, we will have a reflection in the x axis. Okay. So what would we need to do to take our original function, our green function right here, and have a reflection in our y axis? So to get something that looks like so. All right, let's do this one in pink. Well, in order to get that to happen, we would have the equation y is equal to the square root, and we just need to make our x value negative. So we will go negative x minus 1. And so if you take a look, if we put any of these input values in on this side, we would get a negative value under our radical, and so that's why that doesn't work. But check if we flip this over across our uh, y-axis and put in negative 1. Negative times negative 1 would give you 1. 1 minus 1 is 0, and of course the square root is 0. Let's put in one more value. Put in negative 2. Negative 2 times a negative is 2. 2 minus 1 is 1, and the square root is going to give me 1, like so. And so you'll see that we get 1, 2, 3, uh, and 4. And right here, you get the nice reflected function across, this time, the y-axis. So I'll write reflection in the y-axis. And so that's kind of an example to show you uh, how it works. If you take a look at the actual individual values, like if we were to take any one of these ordered pairs, for instance, this ordered pair is located at 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 2. So I'll write that right there as 5 and 2. We'll take a look at the corresponding uh, reflected ordered pairs. Well, this one right here, our blue value, notice that it's at 5 and now negative 2. So the only thing that has changed for that value, of course, is the y value, which shouldn't surprise us. Okay? And then if we look at the, uh, the pink graph right here, it shouldn't surprise us that the only value that's changed in this case is going to be the x value. So we have this ordered pair at negative 5 and 2. Okay, so that is an example that uh, that looked at it. In general, what we can say is uh, is the following right here. And so um, it basically just has, in general, like I said, uh, it deals with the ordered pairs, and so you can figure out how the ordered pairs all look. And it just tells you how we need to um, change the graph if we want to reflect it uh, across the x-axis like that. You just put the negative in front uh, of our function. And if you want to reflect it across the y-axis like this, you just need to put the negative in front of the x. Okay? So that's really this entire lesson. We'll look at a couple examples, and then you are on your uh, way. So example one says... Here's the graph of y is equal to g of x. Sketch the image graph after reflection in the y-axis. So, of course, my y-axis right here. State the domain and range of the original function and its image. Well, let's start by reflecting it in the y-axis, and then we'll deal with the domain and range after. So my y-axis being right here. So if this point is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units over, it'll now be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 units over in this direction. Okay. This one is 1, 2, 3 over, and so it'll be 1, 2, 3 over in this direction. 
This one is at one, so it'll be one right here. And then we'll have one, two, three, so we have one, two, three, like that. So all I'm doing is I'm just taking them the exact same distance across my y-axis. And so we'll have a function that looks like so. Okay. So let's talk about the uh, domain and range. So we have our original function. The original function is y is equal to g of x. And then we have our new function. And recall, because we've reflected it across the y-axis, then the negative is going to change inside the function. So I'll write this as y is equal to g of negative x. Okay. And so we'll set up our domain and range, and we'll take a look at what's going down for these. So the domain, has the domain changed? Well, I think you can see that the domain has. The domain for our original function went from 5 to negative 3. So x is between 5 and negative 3. And how has our new function changed? Well, the highest value we have is at 3, and it's at negative 5. Notice that those just kind of switch directions. So the x is going to be less than or equal to 3 this time and it is greater than or equal to negative 5. Has the range changed at all though? Well, if you look, the highest value that we had before was at 2, and the lowest value was at negative 2. So we'd say that y is between 2 and negative 2. And because we've just um, uh, reflected it across the y-axis right here, the domain, or sorry, the range has not changed. We'll just say that it is the same. Okay, and that is example 1. Example 2 here says, Here's the graph of y is equal to g of x. Sketch the graph um, of y is equal to negative g of x. And so you might want to make a little note of what that means right here. Because it's a negative in front, that means that that is going to be a reflection different than the last example. So rather than it being across the y-axis, this one's going to be a reflection in the x-axis. So make sure that we have an understanding of that. And then they want us to, uh, just like we did before, state the domain and range. Okay, let's start by sketching the graph of the function after a reflection in our x-axis. Now, this is going to be a little sketchy uh, because uh, it's tough to find exact points, but we'll try our best. So notice that we have this point right here. It looks like it's at a height of, uh, of 1 or a y value of 1, but these are actually going up by increments of 2 in the y direction. So this one that's at 2 right here is actually going to be at negative 2, so I'll draw a dot right there. This one is going to be at 2, 4, and 6, so I'll put 1, 2, 3. This one will be at negative 6 like so. And then the best that we can do is try to estimate where these other points would be. If this one's at 1, 2, 3, 4, that really means it's at about 8 right there. I'll put this point at the same spot. So it's going to go fluidly right to here, and then it's going to bounce off and then make its way this direction. Uh, this one at that region is at negative 8, so I'll put it up at positive 8 like so. Okay. So the best that you can with a nice free-flowing curve, we'll have it go through that point, and then that point, and then down. If you ever miss the point, just make it a little bit bigger. That's my little cheat right there. Uh, and finally, let's go and uh, figure out what the domain and range are. So we have an original function was y is equal to g of x. The new function is y is equal to negative g of x. Of course, that's a reflection in the x-axis we just saw right here. And then let's deal with our domain and our range. So the domain. Uh, this graph, as you can see for both of them, it's going infinitely to the left and to the right. So we say that x can be anything uh, for both of them. All right, so that's fairly straightforward. Uh, they're both the same. And uh, the range. The range, the graph is going infinitely high and infinitely low. So for both of our functions, we have a y or a range that can be anything. Okay. Let's mosey on to example three, our last example. Example 3 says the graph of y is equal to 1 over negative 2x squared minus 0 0.5 was reflected in the x-axis, and its image is shown. What is the equation of this new image? Well, the first thing I'll get you to note is what does it mean reflected in the x-axis? Well, reflected in the x-axis means that we have taken our function, and we have, because it is in the x-axis, there's going to be a negative in front of our function. So if we call our function g of x, uh, we know that it's going to be negative g of x like so. Okay, so we can use that information to help us a little bit. If we have y is equal to negative g of x, all that means if we want to find the, uh, the image right here is that we just need to take the existing function and put a negative in front. So this is going to end up being negative brackets 1 all over negative 2x squared minus 0.5. 
Okay? And then what we're going to do from there is we're simply just going to distribute out the negative. Now you could distribute the negative across the numerator or the denominator. I'm going to choose to use the denominator right here just because these negative values will end up um, canceling out and becoming positive and I think it'll look a little bit nicer in the end. So the final simplified answer right here is just going to be 1 all over 2x squared plus 0.5. Okay? And so that uh, would be the equation of this, uh, this image right here. So because we knew that it was reflected uh, in the x-axis, we knew that we could just throw a negative in front of our function, feed that in, distribute that in, and then we have our image like so. Okay, so the big thing in this lesson is you simply just need to know um, where the, the negative value is going to go in order to reflect it across the x-axis like we did here or across the y-axis like we've done in some of the previous examples. All right, that concludes this lesson.